sword. Britain was now the undisputed ruler of Europe, and Rothschild ruled England. The already dominant British Empire grew even more aggressive. Her troops and bureaucracy spread across the globe. The sun never set on Britannia's holdings. The banking cartel funded, in fact, since about 1800, they have funded both sides of almost every war. And of course, they're getting the interest off of the loans that they've given the various governments and the wars that they have actually helped stimulate and create. By 1900, Germany was a rising force and a leader of the Industrial Revolution. Uh, World War I, for instance, there was absolutely no reason to have World War I, except that it was an ideal opportunity for the banking cartel to make a pile of money by funding both sides of that particular war. On June 28, 1914, the heir to the Austrian-Hungrian throne, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated while traveling in a motorcade. The Black Hand, a Serbian secret society with connections to French and British intelligence, took credit. World War I had begun. Armaments companies financed by Rothschild-controlled banks in Germany, France, England, and Austria bankrolled all the factions. At least 20 million were killed in the war. It was a conflict so terrible the people vowed to never fight again. They dubbed it the war to end all wars. The question is, why did they want war? Well, first of all, is money and power. But secondly, they wanted to create the League of Nations. They had this in their plans all along, and as a consequence, once the war was over or about to be over, they began to formulate this idea of a League of Nations so this would never, ever happen again. Hundreds of years of practice made the British experts at hiding their empire behind puppet governments and councils. In the name of stopping all future conflicts, they proposed that countries would join a League of Nations. Their true intention was for the League to serve as a framework for world government. President Woodrow Wilson, who had spearheaded the establishment of the private Federal Reserve System in the United States in 1913, strongly supported the establishment of the League of Nations. Woodrow Wilson was a very naive president. He was basically a college professor that was grafted into this whole system. The League convened in Paris in 1919, but many nations recognized it as a threat to their sovereignty and refused to join. Frustrated by the U.S. Congress blocking the League of Nations, British intelligence, with the help of the Rockefeller family, set up the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City in 1921. The Council recruited the best and brightest of American life to support the growth of the Anglo-American Empire. The CFR's stated mission is to abolish all nation-states in favor of an all-powerful world government administered by a tiny elite. By 1930, the promoters of world government had split into two interlocking camps. The Fabian Socialists centered in London and the Fascist based in Italy and Germany National Socialism will use its own revolution for establishing a new world order. Adolf Hitler. Supporters of the fascists in the United States and England believed that the military should be used to quickly transform the world into a new world order. All the more sophisticated practitioners of globalism stated that incrementalism was the sure path to world domination. Congressional Medal of Honor winner Major General Smedley Butler went public in 1934, exposing an attempt by the robber barons to launch a military overthrow of the United States. 
The war hero testified to the McCormick Dickstein Committee in Congress that some of the most powerful men in America had tried to recruit him to lead a military coup so they could set up national socialism in the United States. I appeared before the Congressional Committee, the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. I was supposed to lead an organization of 500,000 men, which would be able to take over the functions of government. The fascist had also made deep inroads in England. Edward VIII, King of England, was forced to abdicate the throne because of his public support for Hitler. Though the German-led fascist camp was strong, the Fabian Socialist bloc was able to maintain control of the U.S., Russia, and England. the build-up to World War II, and during the conflict, the bankers again financed both sides, just as they had done with Napoleon. With the rise and fall of the Third Reich, Europe lay in ruins. Once again, the elite claimed that only global governance could save humanity from certain destruction. And this time, the elite would succeed in setting up their world body. In April of 1945, at the Presidio Naval Base in San Francisco, the United Nations was founded by the victors of World War II. The United Nations complex was then built in New York City on land donated by John D. Rockefeller. Shortly after the elite established the United Nations as their base in the United States, the newly formed World Council quickly began work on the next phase in their plan, the incremental formation of continental superstates. The first step in their trilateral plan was the creation of the European Union. Unifying Europe had been tried many times and was extremely unpopular. Where Napoleon and Hitler had failed to accomplish their goals using force, the globalists would succeed using stealth. The British spearheaded the formation of the Council of Europe on May 5, 1949. The Treaty of London claimed to only establish trade ties between European nations, like NAFTA or GATT in North America. Its true intention was the formation of a European superstate. In 1954, the elite of the planet met in secret at the Bilderberg Hotel in Oosterbeck, Holland. The Bilderberg Group would later admit that their mission was the formation of the EU. Once the EU was established, under the guise of trade deals, a North American Union and Asian Union would be formed. The three interlocking superstates form the core of the global government, while the United Nations would serve as a world regulatory and enforcement body over the Third World subregions. The Bilderberg Group consists of the heads of all of the managing roundtable groups that steer individual countries. Picture the elite power structure of the world as a giant pyramid, with only the elite of the elite at the tip top of the capstone. The group has been so secretive that until the mid-1980s, the controlled corporate media denied its existence. 